Hey YouTube, it's Luke here from Ausmed Student. Now I've got a pretty exciting video to bring to you guys today. Just this morning I went down to the blood bank and for the very first time I donated plasma and platelets. So I'll jump straight into the video. I want you to, I want to talk you through it and show you the experience and what it's like. Uh, for those of you out there who are thinking about donating, it's something that's really important. And as a future medical professional, it gives us the opportunity to have treatments which we can give to really, really sick patients who are going to be much worse off otherwise and in some case even pass away. So thank you for donating if you choose to donate. Um, if not, here's a bit of information to show you what the process is like and maybe you can start some conversations with other people about donating blood because it's certainly a really great thing to do. So here we are at the blood bank, the Australian Red Cross. I've got uh, my arm out, left arm out, getting set up for the donation here. So this lady's just swabbed my skin with an antibacterial swab right over the vein in the uh, cubital fossa, which you can see is poking out there. So that one right in the middle, that's what she's gonna be aiming for with the needle. So when you go to have a blood donation, they, they take you in, you have to answer a series of questions just to make sure you're a suitable donor and that you're not going to have any added risks uh, in your blood such as any bloodborne infections and things like that so if you're not sure pop down to the red cross have a chat to them and they'll be able to answer any questions now they're just about to start uh, the needle here as you can see she's setting up very nearly ready to go coming over checking that I'm all ready to go yep. and here we are okay, let's get started Squeeze and hold. you can see she's a bit of an expert has gone straight in um, wasn't too painful at all straight into that little vein there uh, and she's taking blood so I'll talk to you through the blood she's taking here that's an FBE the one in the purple it's a called a full blood examination so they can check for your white cells which are immune cells to see if there's any signs of infection they can make sure you're not anemic or low on uh, red blood cells either. They also test your UNEs or your urea and electrolytes. So they can look at your renal function. They can look at all the electrolytes in your blood as well. So they can check to see if your sodium's too low or too high or if your potassium levels are too low or too high. When you first start doing an thesis, mm -hmm. and just checks the background in your blood so for blood point and for biochemistry. Yep. yep. And then every year we'll check them again. Okay just to make sure everything's all right. Cool. So I'm going to put you onto the touch machine room. Right? Okay. So they've got the needle, it's attached to that green clip, that's called a butterfly clip, and then it's attached to some tubing which they're about to hook up to the machine now. They've just opened that white clamp which lets the blood flow through and they're hooking up the tubing which will then run through quite a lengthy cord up to this machine which I'll show you shortly. So you can see there the blood's just started to trickle through the machine. That shows that the line's patent, uh, there's no blockages and it's ready to go. So from a donor point of view you just um, get to lie here, you relax, your feet are up. Uh, you can pump your wrist a few times to get things going. Takes it from here. Oh, yeah. And then to the ball. The ball spins about seven and a half thousand moves a minute, so it pushes the red cells to the outside. That's the guy pushing the ball. And we all know that once the ball is full, which will be 280 processed, mm -hmm. then the plasma will start to spill in into the bag here. So that's how we collect it. So we want to be 280 maximum on the cycle, or cells start to come through because we just want to keep plasma, we don't want anything to eat. Any white cells, the red cells, the red cells. So once we get to 280, our cells come through, um, a message sent back here and that will stop the med move. So we will going to turn the cells back to you. Now because we're working 686, or 676, mm -hmm. it will only take 280 in a cycle, we're going to do it in different cycles. Mm -hmm. So we'll take so much from you, give your cell what's left and hold back, yep. then we'll start again. Okay. Well, the cuff's tight, and you can just yeah, do it a squeeze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the cuff relaxes, if you can relax as well. Sure. So it might have been difficult to hear some of what the nurse was saying there, but it's hooked up to the machine. Uh, they have, you can see on the left there, uh, that's the pump, it usually rotates, uh, that sucks the blood up. 
um, you can see it spinning there. Okay. It then runs into the centrifuge, which is designed to spin the blood. So the components of blood are your red cells, which in this donation will stay in you. They get split apart from your plasma, and within that are your platelets. So those plasma and platelets will spin out in the centrifuge. They're then collected into this bag, and your red blood cells are returned to you. So when this is happening, you just have to sit there, squeezing, and uh, just take your time, put your feet up. Yep. You can see that's the butterfly clip. It's nice and neatly into the vein. They tape it down. You've got your tubing, which is nice and secure. So you just get to sit there, rest your arm comfortably, and put your feet up while this happens. It takes about 35 minutes or so. Mine today took me 35 minutes. It can you know, be five, 10 minutes either side of that, uh, but it's not usually too long. Um, they give you a nice drink while you're waiting so you can stay hydrated and let the machine do its thing. So that's a good view of the pump there. You can see it's spinning on the left. Uh, the large gray circular thing that's right in the middle there is the centrifusion. You can see the platelets um, and the plasma just coming through. So there it is, starting to fill up the bag. It looks a bit like urine, it's the, it's the color of urine. You can see that it's starting to flow now um, after it's been centrifuged by that uh, gray spinning machine that, that turns rapidly. So you can see it's nice and foamy. Uh, there's a little bit of a foamy layer on top. That's uh, what happens as it separates out. There's a bit of air in the centrifuge and you get uh, the plasma churning into a bit of foam which will settle in the bag. Now you can see the needle placement uh, right here. You can see the needle is is not actually in line with my arm. Now the nurse did very a very good job at this. Uh, so for anyone interested or who might be putting needles in someone down the track, you notice that you don't necessarily follow the, the line of the needle with the line of the arm. What you need to aim for is the line of the vein. So the, the nurse has done that quite well. It's lined up with the vein, which makes sure that it stays inside the vein and doesn't poke through to the other side. One of the things I've learned in medical school is that you'll have more success if you go for a vein that you can feel as opposed to one that you can see. So feel for that nice, juicy, bouncy vein and you'll maximise your chance of success. So we're getting a bit later on in the uh, donation here. You can see the bag is starting to fill up. The plasma is actually quite dark coloured, especially when it's in a nice thick bag like that. Um, now that's just the plasma. The red cells have been periodically separated and then actually returned back through me so every now and then the machine will turn off and the red cells will get flushed through which with a bit of saline which you can see hanging in the bag up there on the right so as that happens you feel quite a cold sensation coming back up through the vein and into your um, circulation again they also give you about 500 mils of saline straight through the drip to make sure that you don't get too dehydrated so this is it, the donation's done, the needle got taken out, you just put a bit of pressure over this site and you get a uh, bandage wrapped around your arm which you leave on for a few hours. Um, in Australia they're very generous here as well, um, the Australian um, Red Cross, they give you muffin juice and um, they thank you for how it went. So I urge you guys to donate, if you can it's a great thing to do and it's really helpful for those in need.